Hey folks, Damien with Southpaw Designs, and I've been gone for a few weeks. School started back, so my priorities have been at school, getting those kiddos started back, and it started off to be a great year. Um, but now we're back in the shop, and we're trying something new. We're going back to basics, and I'm trying to improve my technique when it comes to painting and sealing uh, V-carve inlays. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try our hand with three different types of sealants to see which one actually holds up the best. The first one we're gonna use is shellac. The second one is going to be lacquer. And the third one is going to be epoxy. Now, I'm not really a fan of trying to use epoxy just as a seal coat, but I read a couple articles saying it was a possibility. So I thought I'd give it a shot. So let's dig right in. To begin with, in an effort to appear all sciency, I'm gonna make a control group, which is just gonna be MDF, pine, and um, white oak but I'm gonna write control on it so it seems like I know what I'm talking about. Then we're gonna try a second option with shellac, a third with lacquer, and the fourth one at the very top is simply going to be epoxy. Next, I'm gonna use two coats of shellac and lacquer. I'm gonna go ahead and seal these up. Now, these paper towels will prevent any shellac from getting on the lacquer or the control section. This is how uh, certain uh, bio labs prevent diseases from getting out to the public, and it works great. Next, let's go ahead and do some lacquer. Same method. I'm actually going to do a total of two coats, uh, which I think will give it a little bit better of a seal there. And next, we're going to move on to epoxy. I'm just using a little um, rubber thing, I think that's the technical term, to uh, spread it out. It ends up being a little thicker than I would like it to be for being a seal coat, but it's still a good experiment. I'm not worried about getting rid of the uh, drips on the sides because all I'm really concerned about is to see how it actually seals. We'll use a little, we'll use a little torch to get any bubbles out there and try to flatten it out a little bit and then let everything set up overnight to dry. Once everything's had a chance to dry, I'll apply some Aura Mask. Uh, Aura Mask is a great protectant. It covers the um, material so the CNC will cut through the Aura Mask. And uh, once it's finished, uh, all that will be exposed will be the part that's actually been cut, which is going to be my engraving. I've left a link down in the description below, so if you need to get any aura mask, you can uh, check it out right there. Uh, now, I didn't sand it, and I did clean it off pretty well, but I didn't sand it, so I feel like that aura mask might not have stuck as tight in a few spots, as you'll see later on, but it still did a pretty good job. Hey, if you haven't done so, I'd appreciate it if you go down, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, uh, leave a comment if you like, because those analytics and those interactions tell YouTube that this is valuable content. It doesn't cost you a penny, and it helps me to get this content out to a broader audience, which makes it worthwhile on my end. All right, once we have everything in place, now we're simply going to cut out the letter M over and over and over again. Don't ask me why I chose the letter M. I believe it was just uh, a cool letter that has a lot of flares and changes in direction. So I thought it would give us a, uh, a good finish so that we can really experiment by painting inside of it. Now that the engraving is done, I'm going to use a fine point brush to put a seal coat inside of that epoxy section. That should give us a nice seal so that we can go back later on and paint it and hopefully get a nice seal coat so there's no bleed. Following that, we'll do the same thing with the lacquer and shellac. Now, in hindsight, I think it would have been better if I were to use two coats of lacquer and shellac um, because we do end up with a little bit of bleed that I wonder if that would have been prevented if I'd had two coats in there. Next, it's time to paint. I'm just gonna to try to spray paint it because I've got it handy. It's readily available and there are a variety of colors. I'm gonna use some gloss black uh, Krylon Fusion all-in-one uh, paint and primer. If anybody has any suggestions of a recommended type of paint to use for this, please let me know because I'm still learning the painting side of things. 
Once it's painted, we simply let it dry. And then let's start peeling. I start off with the pine. Why? I don't know. I just did. And as we can see with the control group, there's definitely quite a bit of bleeding in there. And that's to be expected. Now let's move on to the white oak. You see a little bit of bleeding, but it's just on top. Hopefully we can sand that off. And then let's move on to the MDF, which, yep, as we figured, with uh, no type of seal there at all, there's quite a bit of bleed. MDF is basically just compressed sawdust, so we thought we would see that. All right, now let's move on to the shellac and peel this off. What I did find was the paint uh, tended to flake off and get on the wood, so you got to be careful of that. Uh, we do see with the shellac a little bit of bleeding on the pine. Now let's move on to the lacquer. The lacquer seems to have done a pretty good job. There's a little bit of bleed, but not much. And then we move on to the epoxy, and it's what I thought would happen. Uh, it's a great finish. In fact, I really like it. I wasn't a fan of actually using epoxy as a, uh, a sealer, but you know what? It looks gorgeous. It's expensive, it's messy, but you can't really argue with the results. Now again, you do see a little bit of uh, grittiness in there. That's because I didn't sand it down to a fine finish because that wasn't the point of this particular uh, exercise. Now let's move to the white oak. And we are going to find that with the, the shellac, there's a little bit of bleed, not much. And hopefully that's on top of the shellac so I can sand that off here and just Next, we'll move to the lacquer, and the lacquer gave us a really good finish. You can actually see at the top of the M right there that a little bit of the flakiness uh, flaked onto the uh, wood, so I'll have to address that. And now let's move on to the epoxy. The epoxy, just like I thought, would be clean and beautiful. And so finally, let's move on to the MDF. Okay, with the shellac, the MDF left quite a bit of uh, bleed right there. Now, again, that could still be on top of the shellac, so if I sand it off, it could come up. You get a similar result with the lacquer, and this could be because the uh, edges kind of crept up a little bit, and they didn't stick to the material, so that could be my fault. And then once again with the epoxy, Actually, with the epoxy, we get a really cool finish uh, on the MDF board. This may be my go-to when I'm seal coating MDF. Okay, once we've had a chance to uh, take off all of the Aura Mask, we will sand everything down and see what it really looks like. Use the blower to blow out any material that happens to be inside of there. Now let's take a look. All right, so what's my takeaway here? With the MDF board, of course, we knew that it was gonna be harder to seal. Had I actually put another coat of shellac or lacquer inside that uh, V-cut, it could have done a better job. You also notice that the epoxy really darkens that MDF because it really soaks in. So you gotta remember that, uh, although you'd probably be painting the surface of the uh, MDF as well. With the softwood, with the pine, we did see that even with a single coat of shellac inside of the uh, inside of the, the V-carve, that it still has a little bit of bleed, but I feel like the lacquer did a much better job. And then, of course, the epoxy did a great job. It's a very thick seal, but I don't know if I want to do an epoxy seal, um, as I've already said. And then finally, with the hardwood, 
all the results are pretty good. Even with only the Aura Mask, we have very little bleed through, but we do have a little bit. Did an excellent job with both the shellac and the, and the lacquer, and then also with the epoxy. So for hardwood, for me personally, I think that my go-to is going to be shellac, just because I like using shellac over um, lacquer because it's natural, it smells a little bit nicer, and I just like going that direction. For softwoods, in this case, it actually looks like the lacquer turned out better, but I may try this experiment again with two coats of sealant inside to see if that does a better job of preventing that uh, bleed with that uh, pine.